hello everybody. I, I hope uh, you won't uh, be too much upset from my English because it is not my mother tongue. So if you don't understand something, you just ask and interrupt me without problems. My name is Fravia and I guess not many people here knows who I am. For those who don't, um, I am a cracker in the software reverse engineering sense. On the jargon, there is a definition of crackers that are something like evil, evil hackers. That's a very old definition of cracker. If you make now an uh, Alta Vista search or something like that on a good search engine, you will meet 100,000 of crackers definitions that are more correct. Now, crackers reverse engineer code. They do not possess the source code, the real source code of. So without knowing what's the source code of a target, of an application you want to reverse, you manage to rebuild, to reconstruct these source code. Most crackers do that mainly in order to defeat software protections schemes, which is very easy, as you will see today. In reality, this is but the first step in reverse engineering. It is great fun because you got these CD-ROMs with hundreds of programs that uh, have a 30 days limit or some other protection. And when you defeat them, you can use that program for ever and ever, which is a repeat very easy. We'll see how to do it today. But uh, what is more interesting is, for instance, to change a target, to change an application. Let's say you are using Netscape and you are not happy with it. So you want, for instance, that the, the default standard buttons go somewhere else while well, you change them. You want another color, well, you do it. Uh, you want Netscape with your pre-configuration, you do it. You just change the code of Netscape. Now, that's very easy now because Netscape went public with the source code. It was not so easy two or three years ago, but uh, we have done it nevertheless. And uh, there are still now some punctured copies of Netscape 3 which uh, have been heavily modified and which are quite interesting tools, actually. But uh, any program and any application can be modified as much as you want once you understand how it works. In order to understand how an application works, you need some tools. And I will explain you which tools you need. And uh, you need a lot of patience and some feeling as well. Now, I don't know actually how much the people that are, that are listening to me now understand about assembly and assembly code. But assembly code, I hope some of you do now. Okay. Assembly code is the half of omega of reversing because uh, sometimes you just need to change one single bar in a huge application that may have a million bytes, for instance, the 74 here is one byte in an application named TechFact95. Sorry? Yeah. The byte 74 is next decimal byte, 74, means jump if equal. If we change only this byte, this one, to EB, that means jump anyway, the wall protection scheme, which is quite a heavy one and complicated, of this application, it is six million bytes long, is fudged. And the protection is no more there, just because you change T74 to EB. Now, the point is, how do you find it, this single byte? It is not difficult. 
uh, we used to say you should never underestimate enough the protectors because they don't understand nothing of assembly and they program with Visual Basic or these overbloated languages so they don't understand nothing at all. So they do huge protections with checks and uh, has he the correct serial number? Did he get the second serial number and the third one as well? And then somewhere in the code you have one single check. Is everything okay? Yes or no? You change it. Now, protection schemes uh, busting is it's not for kids, but I mean, it's very easy, as you will see. Uh, but you can go beyond it, because there are other things you can reverse, which are quite interesting, per se. For instance, uh, search engines, algorithms, just to make you an example, if you search for Fravia on Alta Vista, you will get automatically at the first place the list of my mirrors. This is not easy, because Alta Vista uses use very complicated algorithms to avoid spam, to avoid people that want their page in the first position. As you probably know, most idiots and morons look only at the first 10, maybe 20 occurrences of a search in Alta Vista or elsewhere. So there is people that make a lot of money pushing sites up on Alta Vista or on Excite or <coughs> on, other, on other search engines. Each search engine has different algorithms that use to establish which site should be relevant in a search. Now, it is not very important for cracking purposes, but it may be very important if you are a lawyer, for instance, and you want your lawyer cabinet at the first place. Uh, I repeat, uh, there is people making a lot of money with that out there, but once more, these people don't understand much about assembly. So you, once you learn the relevant techniques that I will explain you, or at least I will try to, uh, you can do it much more easily than they. So if you want your own site in the first position in Alta Vista when somebody looks for I don't know what, you can have it. Just to make you an example, I will tell you what Excite, Excite is a search engine. Ma makes. Excite, I'm sorry if I read something, but I, I don't remember everything, so this is perhaps a little. Excite has not all his stuff on a huge computer, but onto several computers, as Alta Vista and many search engines. On one search on Excite, one computer may be down. So the same search, two seconds afterwards, can give different results. Uh, Techniques that are used for spamming search engines would bring us uh, a, little, a little outside our, 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 our path. But they're very interesting because, uh, for instance, there are algorithms that check that the same word is not uh, too near to the same word. So if you have more than seven words between the two keywords, if you have more than that, your site will be listed in the search engines, for instance, in Atavista. If you have less than seven, then you're trying to spam, and your site will not be listed. So these kind of things, uh, if you put keywords in the alt tag of bullets, or, or these kind of uh, small images that you use on your page, some search engines will accept that, other search engines will not. So these kind of things, are very nice, very interesting, and are very easy to understand once you look at the relevant sites. So you do your search, you look which 10 sites uh, come first on a given search, and then you look at the source code, HTML, and you understand why most of the time. So there are other things that uh, can be reversed, not only software, I repeat. For instance, uh, to make you another interesting example, uh, barcodes on, on any object that you have. There is a barcode. Now, barcodes are quite interesting because uh, they have, uh, not so secret now, but uh, two or three years ago it was quite secret, uh, a, a very interesting uh, mechanism to do them. I don't know if somebody here knows it, 
If not, I will quickly explain it because it's very nice and barcodes are everywhere. And I want just to underline that not only software reversing is fun, but anything around you that has a hidden meaning, like barcodes. So now have a look at the barcode. Perhaps you have a bottle there or something like that. The last time I bought them, you have 13 numbers. But uh, as you can see, on the right part of the barcode, you hear me? <coughs> on the right part of the barcode, each number has a corresponding uh, line. So zero here is the dick line and a small line, and zero here on the right part. On the left part, the same zero has a completely different graphical meaning. So, the point is that the first number in barcodes gives you the sequence that is used in the graphic characters. So, for instance, four means A, I hope I remember it correctly, A, B, A, A, B, B, and then the other six are called C. So, this different graphic character. And C is a not A graphic character, and B is the XOR A graphic character. Once more, that is assembly. If you XOR something, then you have the completely... Sorry. Zero, 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 zero. One, 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 one. And then you can XOR the not. There are many, many mathematical, arithmetical uh, operations you can do with, with zeros and one. And these are used in barcode heavily to to make it. Why is that interesting? It is interesting because uh, once you know of this work, you could come to the idea to print your own barcode on some adhesive paper, to put them, for instance, on a nice Pentium 3 computer in a huge mall, and then you go out and maybe, I mean, it could happen. <laughs> There are, there are many programs out there that will uh, help you to make very effective barcodes. And remember that uh, from the machine point of view, that you have barcodes on, with, with orange colors or, or with, with uh, numbers per hand written doesn't make any difference. You make them nice just for the eventual human vision. But the machine are very, very careless because they must read barcodes on wood, on hard paper, on plastic. So how thing is that you do them correctly for, 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 for the shop where, 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 I, where you want to experiment. So that's uh, another thing. I, I mean, the, all these is just to, if, if you are interested in all these kind of things, I will give you now the address, uh, the, the internet address where you can, you can further you still this, that it's uh, either you make a search for, 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 for my own site, but there are many, many good sites out there. I'm not uh, going to make publicity for, for myself, uh, but you will find them. And there is especially a, a, very, a very interesting uh, essay about barcodes that you will easily find, uh, where you can also download the relevant software to, to prepare them. So. Uh, that was now about crackers once more. I mean, uh, there is at the moment uh, maybe somebody here knows. I don't know how many among you are crackers, but uh, there is at the moment uh, I wouldn't say a fight, but uh, quite a big difference between uh, real crackers, people that are just uh, defeating protection codes and releasing uh, uh, releasing key generators and these kind of things and uh, what we call ourselves, that is reversal. So people that explain how, how these things work. Uh, this battle is, is sometimes hard uh, fought. Uh, my site is under attack since 98, and they tried everything to bring it down from uh, scene attacks to uh, downloading microcode to the Cisco routers. They, don't succeed with it, but uh, they are trying it because they, they, they hate the guts of us. But uh, that's uh, once more just web law that uh, you may be excused if you're not interested in. Anyway, there are very good crackers uh, that uh, understand immediately, feel actually, where a protection scheme is in a target. 
some people say that uh, the protectors add the protection scheme at the end. So they, they prepare the program, and the program is smooth. And then they say, ha ha, someone is gonna, is, gonna, is gonna steal it. So we better add a protection. And this added protection is like something ugly on, on this code. So you, you see it, you feel it, especially if you use the profilers. And, and I'm going to the tools now, the tools you, you will like to use if you will uh, start, uh, uh, if you will start this uh, activity. But perhaps, uh, yeah. You have a program and you don't know <coughs> where is the protection. There are many kinds of protections. So first thing, you run the program and you understand what's the protection there. Uh, the most common protection nowadays is the 30-day uh, protection. But there are many others. There are Cinderella protections. That is a protection that uh, uh, will make your target not more utilizable at a given day. Let's say at uh, January 2000, what works anymore. Then there are quiver protection. That is when you can use it 30 times. It doesn't matter when, but after 40 times use, it's stop. And there are other kinds of time protection. For instance, uh, many flight simulators, you can fly games, but uh, the games are very interesting protection at times. Flight simulators where you can fly for, say, two seconds or 20 seconds and then stop. That's another kind of protection. There is a counter, obviously. You just find the counter and then, you, or you reset it. You will see that. And then, now more and more widespread, there are crippled programs protection. That is, you have a program where you cannot save or where you cannot open something. These kind of things. They are very easy to, to defeat, by the way. So, now, depending on the protection of your programs, somewhere in the code, you will have the point where the protection scheme snaps. Now, to get the code, first of all, you need a disassembler. There are now, at this moment, two main disassemblers. A very professional one that's named IDA38, Interactive Disassembler. It's the best one, but it's a little complicated for beginners. So <coughs> just know that it exists and that you will enjoy it a lot when you use it because you can make scripts, you, you can make a lot of things I won't go into now. But for beginners, I would suggest WDASM, W D R S. Of course, all these disassemblers are protected, but that's not uh, a great problem. Uh, Dazm is another disassembler, which is very beginner friendly. And I would suggest you begin with that one. You will find it everywhere on the web, but on my side. But everywhere on the web. And it is very easy to find anything on the web once you learn how to search. Once you learn how to search, you will quickly find any program any image and now almost any sound you want <coughs> to find. How to search is a art per se, and you will. Uh, there are many places on the web where you can learn it. Uh, uh, let's say that once more, if you know how the search engines work, or even better, if you write your own pair search boards, which is quite easy actually. You can find some skeleton of these bots on my side, and you can just copy them and mute them. If you do that, you will find anything, everywhere. You will find very, very interesting information, by the way. Very, very reserved information, if you want uh, to search it. Because banks, military establishment, <coughs> all these kind of people just put the things somewhere. They, 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 they forget them somewhere. And you can find everything, or almost everything. And it, Anyway, you will easily find this disassembler with us. The disassembler will give you a disassembler code. So, it will be very, very big. Uh, maybe perhaps, uh, so, <coughs> PaintShop Pro 5, last version, I think, 5 or 4, for that, a very recent one. It's 40 megabyte in this assembly. So, it, it, it's, it's a big file. But it doesn't matter, then you search relevant parts very quickly. For instance, this number here, inside that file, 480718, correspond to the string unregistered 
that's how I got it. So you just search. It's really, it's very stupid. Yeah, it's very easy. You just search for unregistered inside your huge disassembly. You find it here, and you see, aha, it's moving the stream unregistered somewhere. Why? And then you look at the above, and you see, ah, here's a jump. If something happens, then it jumps away from this unregistered and it jumps to that sense of battery. <laughs> so, now, man, if I could always implement this jump, yes, you can. You just change it to a bit. How do you change them? You change them with the X editor. I think many of you know that. Uh, there are many good X editor. Most crackers use Heave. I personally use uh, X Workshop. There is a very old DOS X editor that's very good. PS Edit. Is, yeah, there are many. You will find them. You will use them, and it will be very quick to find this point and to change that single point. Now, yes. Uh, how's the correspondence between sequence point uh, 0781 and the word So how do you find the point uh, in the end? How do you find this jump? No, how do, how do you find the point under Gisset? You said uh, you search in the point because, by file for under Gisset. Because inside code are all strings. And string number 480718 ah. is unregistered. String number written it another number correspond to license better. Now this is a very stupid protection of course modern protection don't write unregistered anymore. They build it the manifest. But uh, it's the same thing. It is even it's very easy to find them as well. It's, I will show you that afterwards. This is a very simple one and uh, I will explain you what happens here just to give you a feeling of the code. I know that's maybe a little boring for people that are that, uh, that's the point of the thing to understand how it works. Yeah? So the first thing that happens here is a compare by. So it's looking if in this memory location there is a zero or not. That's what, what's happening here. Now, if there is a zero, everything is okay. Wow, guys register. Let's go there. If there is not a zero, then you get the bad gay flag, that is this zero one in the L. Then he does other things. Then he goes and does and, and calls a routine that will show you you are unregistered, you should register, you know what. And then he goes away with his job. He goes away for, forever in program for yeah. So that's what happens if you if you don't have a zero there. But if you have a zero, then you jump to the good guy part. And in the good guy part. Then you have another code that shows you, wow, you change the version, you're a good guy. And you get, uh, where is it? Uh, um, somewhere. I can't say it now. But you get a, a good guy flag as well. So in the register X, you get zero. So that's, that's uh, what, what's happening in this little snippet of code, it's very few lines, yeah? where you have everything. Because the, the moment you find the unregistered string, you look a little above, you look a little below, you see it. I mean, it's, 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 it's like shooting records. And I, I've been telling these things at, at, at programmers again and again. And on my side, there is a whole section how to protect better with, with very good, uh, uh, with very good uh, advices for programmers that want to protect uh, their, their, their programs. The problem is that no matter what you do, Somewhere in assembly, it is very easy to find where your protection is. No matter what, there is no protection until now, at least that I know of, that uh, has not been busted. Very complicated protection as well, where you don't have any name at all, but you find it nevertheless. Because there is another way to find things. This is the dead listing way. So you have a listing of your programs, <coughs> you sit somewhere in the shadow with a pencil, you look at it and you say, ha ha, it's here. But there is another way, and that's the live way to crack, or to reverse, if you want. You use another program named Debugger, and the name of the powerful one is Soft Eyes. You use Soft Eyes. 
Softice is very useful for other things as well. I mean, if you want to cheat on online games, then with Softice, you, you are the emperor of doesn't matter which game. With soft eyes, you can see these things happen when the program ran. So you, you see this line going through, and then you see the register changing, and then you can experiment. You can, ah, what happens if I change? Just let's have a look at it. And then you see it. You see it at the moment because Windows runs inside soft eyes. You run soft eyes before. And then Windows, Windows 98, Windows NT, doesn't matter which Windows, runs inside soft eyes. So at any moment, you can block completely doing Control D. Where is it? Damn it. Yeah. That is soft eyes running in Windows 98. As you can see, in this very moment, I can see which code is executing in this moment in Windows. Windows has been frozen, dead. And I am on the code line that was executed in this very moment. So I can see everything. How many tasks are running, which task, which windows, how big are the windows, how small are the windows. That's not an important thing when you crack. Because let's say that your unregistered message is not with the string unregistered. The string is very dynamic. But you have a look at the window of unregistered where it appears. And you see that it's 311 pixel width. Well, it doesn't matter if you wrote or didn't wrote unregistered. Just look for 311 pixels somewhere it would be. Because it has to write 311 somewhere. And you find the window. And then you find the unregistered. That's another way. Same thing with the color. Which color is the window? Blue? Pixia? Where, where is it? So there are 100 ways to get to a protection. It is very easy. It is, I believe, uh, just the first step. I, I, I would like to, 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 to underline this. Now, um, what uh, I wanted to tell you. Ask a question? Yes, sure. Uh, uh, what if uh, the implementation includes something like a checksum? That means I change part of the code and the checksum is up. That is beautiful because uh, then you have a checksum as well to defeat. But what happens is that at the very moment that you just you just do it before. You don't even look for the protection. First of all, you just change a byte somewhere. And then immediately you say, aha, somebody is trying to change my program because he has done a serious thing. But you find that immediately. And then you begin your your They don't do it anymore. It's so easy to defeat. They don't use that, uh, that anymore. What they are trying to do now, uh, in, in, in the best protection I know of at the moment is Qt FTP. Qt FTP, the last version, has very good protection. I won't tell you which one. You, if you are interested, you can find out. A very, very good protection that secretly connects to the web and gives to the guys at Qt FTP the fact that you're using an unregistered version. Uh, this is the kind of thing that Microsoft does too by the way, so they have hidden code that connects and, 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 and gives away um, uh, facts and data that you have on your hard disk. You probably know that because there was quite a big uh, history about Windows 98 doing exactly this uh, four or five months ago. Just to make you an example of these things, and I will, here it is. Yeah. Depending if you use uh, another thing, I'm concentrating on Windows uh, because that's what we want <coughs> to crack. There is, yeah. I mean, there are very very big applications. Everyone is using them. They are, they are lousy, you know. Uh, they are not good. But the wind is blowing that way, so crackers should uh, study that kind of protections. Uh, there are some Linux, uh, Linux uh, protections now, and some of them are explained on my side, by the way. There is a part about Linux cracking. But let's say that uh, we concentrate on, on, on Windows applications because uh, most <laughs> protection schemes and most interesting ones are there. Now, if you, you probably all know that uh, inside Excel 97, there is a Doom game. 
Yeah, there is a hidden doom game. There is a sequence of, of, of code that you can do and then start a doom game inside Excel. Inside Warp 97, there is a flipper. So there is a sequence of code. If you want, I can tell it to you. Uh, so for, for the doom game, you want to know it? Are you interested or not? Yes. Or you can, you can do it afterwards for the one day. If you want doom in Excel, then it's this way. Choose create new document. Choose create new document in Excel 97. Yeah. Go to line 95. Select the wall line 95, clicking left. So you get the wall line in Excel. Yeah. Then you do tab. When you do tab, you are on 95B. Now you choose about Microsoft Excel in the menu. You do Control Shift. And then you choose technical support. And then start a Doom window and you can play Doom. It's not a complete Doom. It's a very small edition. It's an Easter egg. So something that the Microsoft people have put inside Excel for the spas of it. Uh, the point is, that's the, the alarming thing, if they put something like that inside Excel, who knows in a bank or in a military establishment somewhere in Europe what the hell there is inside Excel? And uh, I'm not so sure that uh, it wouldn't be quite interesting for Microsoft or in general for our American friends to know what, for instance, the European Central Bank is doing right now. And there is so much overblotted code inside Excel that you can use it yourself. You can hide there everything you want. There are parts of Excel that are never used. They are just remaining from, from debugging session they never took off. Million of bytes that are never, maybe, never, who knows, never used. So inside these huge applications, with very few people that know assembly, there are good chances that you can smuggle, put things inside that do you something useful for you. Now that's exactly what's happening now, everywhere. People are using the DLL, the dynamic libraries of Windows, the part of the dynamic libraries where there is code that's not used, to put other things inside. Let's say, for you make another example, quite interesting one. Let's say you work in a corporation and you, you fear that somebody is looking what you're doing and which programs you are installing on your computer or what are you doing during the day. Well, the best way, in my opinion, is to put the programs you want to use inside some DLL or some other program. I mean, you can just name your game with a funny name put it in the Windows directory where there is everything and nobody knows what, and you can use it and probably nobody would, 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 would automatically check it because they, are, they have sniffer programs, as you know, in all corporations that check the content of your hard disk. But what you can do as well is to use routines. Let's say you find an interesting routine inside Excel or inside Word. Word is legitimate. They gave it to you on your workplace, so you can use Word. Nobody can say anything. Now. You use some part of words you're not supposed to, to sniff around, which you can do. And this is very interesting, because no system administrator, or some, but very few, will come to the idea that you're using their program to sniff on them. What? That is what you can do, actually. Once you understand how, how you can hook a routine, how you can change the routine, how you can pass different parameters to a routine, all these things are very easy because the very moment I don't want this thing, I want another one, I get another one. That would make you stupid. That's the point. So I just change these numbers. Now have a look. Please snipe your phone, please. Yeah, sorry. I I promised you that I will finish with, with assembler code after this next thing, but I want you to understand it uh, once for all. Have a look at the first line. This first line is compare by pointer memory location, this one, with zero. I told you that before. It corresponds to the hexadecimal numbers 80, 3D, 1A, F3, 4C, 0, 0, 0, 0. Why? Here's why. These hexadecimal numbers 
correspond to binary code, of course. As you can see, the tree is always 0011. If it is in 3D or in F3, it's the same thing. So now, this is compare byte pointer this memory location, and you can see that that memory location, it's there. in inverted order. So this memory location here, it's in the exadecimal code. And this last zero here is this compared zero. So 83D means compare by pointer. Now, in general, 80 means compare. There are many sequences that begin with 80, and all of them means compare something with something else. If you will begin to reverse software someday, if you're interested in that, you will build your own tables, reverse table, where we'll have 83D compare by pointer, 80 do the, that, that, and that. And you will, in that way, very quickly be able to reconstruct, change, modify code. I won't annoy you anymore with assembly, but I wanted to underline how important it can be nowadays for a series of things, not only for software protections, but for, as our cryptography friends knows, for cryptography, for, let's say, uh, algorithm in general, so search engines, algorithm, and that kind of things, busting or understanding, and for other things as well. Uh, let's see if I finish. Ah, oh, yeah. I told you before that inside uh, any application or target, there are a lot of things that uh, should not be there or that have been forgotten inside. It is great fun to have a look at them, really great fun. Uh, just to make you an example, for those of you that don't know it, inside Netscape, there are the following periods. I read them to you. Sorry. There are legal restrictions on arithmetic coding. There is no way you can get this message, but it is inside Netscape. Then you have, ooh, like check for new mail and stuff. Ooh, like get new mail and stuff. Then you have unscramble naughty jokes. That's inside Netscape. Yeah? Then you have, ooh, like see the license file and stuff. And then you have the book of Mozilla. Inside Netscape, you have the world book of Mozilla. That's the reason Netscape is called Mozilla. And the beast shall come forth surrounded by a roiling cloud of vengeance. The house of the unbelievers shall be wrath and they shall be scorched to the earth. Their tags shall blink until the end of the days. That's inside Netscape. You can get in the browser, yeah. But that, that all these things, some of them, you, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the uh, question is, how can anyone nowadays know that a program you buy, legitimately buy, I mean, if you want, uh, doesn't, have, doesn't have inside things that can be dangerous or complicated for you? If you use another tool that I didn't list before, that is Reg Monitor, you have three main tools that you use to see what happens inside your computer. File monitor, reg monitor, and VXD monitor. Inside your Windows computer. If you use Linux, you have to use other things, but uh, I mean for Windows, yeah? If you use reg monitor and then you start Windows, you have something like three megabytes of accesses to register out in changing, making things in the register. You don't even notice that every program is doing. If you use file monitor, you see file being opened, temporary file being made, a hell of a lot of things that are going on and you're not even supposed to know. Just to make you an example, inside your Windows 95 computer, those of you that are using Windows still now, there are two files, names MM256 and the other one I forgot, somebody knows? No, no one of you? I'll tell you right now, because that's quite interesting things. In these files, are uh, all the locations you have been on internet have 
been listed there. You can have a look at them if you don't believe me. It's quite funny. Where are they? Yeah. MM 256 dot and MM 2048 dot. These files are inside every computer that uses Windows 95. There are eight copies of these files. Each one of them can be between half a megabyte and three megabyte big. That's the reason your hard disk looks very small. Yeah? And in these files is everything. Every program you have started, every website you have visited. So this is something that Microsoft thinks you're not even supposed to know. Now, everybody knows that now, but uh, three years ago, four years ago, it was not like that. I mean, some people found out that and they had a look and what's that? And we had to have a look at the source code to understand what that was. So theoretically, by the way, these files are there to help you so that your Microsoft Internet Explorer can assess more quickly some sites. In, 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 in truth, these files can be used to snoop on your uses by any system administrator if you are using Windows 95 computer. Don't think that in Windows 98 the things are different, only the names are different. If you have a look, for instance, just a moment. Oh, I lost it here now, but uh, anyway. <coughs> anyway, an interesting experiment that you can do right now when you go back to your computer, those of you that are using Windows, is to have a look at the user, where is it? At the user dot file. Probably you already know it, but if you never did it, do it right now, and it will be very, really great fun. You will find the user that inside your Windows directory, if you will use Windows 95 98. You just copy it somewhere else with another name, because you cannot touch it, it is continuously accessed by the system, and you have a look at it, and uh, you will be quite surprised by what you will find inside user that, if you never had a look at that. So, now, I have some slightly more complicated protection schemes to touch, or we can speak about searching information, which is, I mean, you have a choice anytime you want a, a, a stolen program. You can uh, crack it yourself, or you can find it already cracked. There are people, as you probably know, that are just doing that. They are cracking programs every day, 30 programs, and putting them somewhere on the web. And if you have a search for apps or words or games, you will find them. I mean, any, anyone, any application. It's not very interesting, in my opinion, to use application that way, but uh, if you know how to search, you don't need at all to, to reverse uh, protection schemes. The reason you should learn that, in my opinion, is that it is not limited to protection schemes. Once you have learned how a program works that you don't know the source code of, then you can modify it. And that's a fun. That's great fun. Because my, for instance, my, my copy of Microsoft Exchange that I'm compelled to use at work is completely different from the real copy of Microsoft Exchange. So when I use it, I have a completely different menu with options that uh, Microsoft people don't even know of. But that's great fun. That's what I want to, to communicate to you is that to change the software you use gives you cosmic power. <laughs> That's true. You can do anything. And you don't have support. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, so, sometime I personally, I, I, I even think that the, the fact that Linux, you have the source code, that it brings the fun off. I mean, it's, <laughs> you already know what's going on. So it's much more fun when, when you get a new program with Qt FTP to, to, to go back to this protection. It was really interesting because the program is very, very, very clever. And he has learned from the previous cracks. 
So every time he made a, a, a Qt FTP um, a new version, we have cracked it and explained how you do it. And he wrote to me every time, I have his letters, and said, ha ha, you got me once more, but I will show you. And, and the, last, the last version is really, very good, and he has, improved, he has improved quite a lot, so we have decided not to publish it anymore because it deserves respect, because it is very good protection, which is very rare because most of the time they don't really don't understand nothing about protecting software. And the commercial protections that you can find on the web are even worse. There is a whole section, I say, about commercial protection, where I demonstrate that there is not a single one of them worth buying. That is a warning for, for programmers. And I, 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 I mean, they are really stupid, really stupid. Some of them are even worse than this one. Could you please give the address of your... Uh... Yes, uh, you can find it by searching, but uh, if not, I'll give you the address right now. That is... Uh, it, I have many mirrors. Uh, the main one is in America, and this is HTTP 129 105 1165 dash Fravia dash Fravia dash is that the word of uh, yeah? dash index HTM because else you won't be able to read it. But uh, there, there are mirrors in Europe, and three of them actually are quite good. Uh, and you will find all of them just, if you make a search on Alta Vista for Fravia, you find it immediately. Uh, I must say that I'm very happy to, to I, I didn't say that at the beginning, uh, it was very delicate for me to be, to be here with you, but it's the first time that I participate to a CCC camp even if we are friends since 95, because I began corresponding with uh, some friends of mine in the CCC 95. And I have the impression that these things work very well, and uh, just wondering why so few crackers and so many hackers are there, but that's uh, another matter. I mean, uh, it's, uh, do you have any questions, or do you want me to go just uh, like that? And, Anything that you are interested in? What about dongles? What about dongles? Sorry? What about dongles? Dongle cracking is the, three years ago, no, four years ago, people thought that, ah, dongle, that is really <laughs> la bête noire. Uh, that's not true. The, all of them, as Aladdin, Hasp, the main one, have been uh, completely reversed. Uh, you will find them everywhere. And uh, it is not complicated. A little, the problem is they don't use the dongle correctly. That's the point. Usually, you should, you should do it this way. Programmers are stupid. You, you should never underestimate them enough. Normally, you have a dongle. So you should send data. Data should be changed. And then back. And then it would be a little more complicated to understand what's happening inside. But they don't do it. They just check that the dangle is there. Is it there or not? Jump equal, jump. <laughs> I tell you, I, no, not always, not always. But very, very often, very, very often. So now, uh, even if they didn't, it is possible, of course, to by try and error to reconstruct what happens. Most easy way, I'll tell you, even if I don't do it, is to buy the dangle, have a look at it, and crack it. Then you will easily understand what's happening in all the dangle of the same series you don't have. But uh, I, I have not the impression that dangle cracking has solved anything. Because, as you probably know, dangles are quite uh, a hassle for programmers because uh, clients don't want them uh, and then you have to have these physical things inside and then you have always problem if you have a zip drive, if you have a printer or something. So dangles are not very, very much used and uh, four out of five, I would say, maybe three out of five, have just a very simple, is the dangle there check in the software. Hmm? It's a smart 
It is in part already now changing, and if you are interested once more, I, I would uh, refer you to the relevant part of my site where there is a whole project on dangle cracking with, uh, I mean, it's not very updated. I think the last essay was published in uh, January or February, but uh, there is quite a lot on the Aladdin and Asp dangles. At the moment, we are concentrated, if you are interested, on the Flex LM protections, uh, which is uh, a time, uh, all this is not very relevant now. I don't think I should go into, into particulars. If you are interested, you can find all this information for free uh, everywhere on the web, actually. And there are many sites. If you are a beginner, there is a site that is even better than mine, which is something I shouldn't say, but it is true. And it's a site by an uh, English uh, friend of mine uh, that you probably already know, no? is the Sandman. And the Sandman site uh, is for beginners. So there you really can, you really have very stupid protections uh, explained uh, step by step so that you really, how to use soft eyes, how to use uh, an X editor, these kind of, of, of very simple things. And, and you will start cracking your own applications in one week time, uh, your own simple application in one week time. Now, uh, which is quite interesting because uh, I, 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 I still remember the first time I, I you really succeed in doing uh, reversing a, a program, or finding out what you want to find out, it's quite a, a feeling, uh, I can tell you. The address of the same... You, uh, you can find all these addresses if you just make a search on Alta Vista, but anyway, it's www.proweb, P-R-O-W-E-B, Point C O point UK dash then tilde Greenway Greenway. Uh, you must understand that all these sites change continuously for obvious reasons. So you better always better check on Alta Vista, and then you will find it uh, much quicker than. So, uh, what uh, did we, ah yes, another, and maybe we can finish this with this. Another interesting uh, and recent uh, development in this is the removing banners campaign. So we f are finding out how to eliminate all these idiotical commercial banners that you have on internet. And uh, uh, we have already published quite a lot of essays that explain you how you can do it. Of course, if you use a browser without images, you don't have them. But there is another way, which is quite interesting, to use your browser with images and you don't see any banner at all. Uh, it requires preparing a file on your hard disk named hosts, where you put the numbers, uh, the, the, the ID address of the, of the obnoxious banners, and they will be eliminated once for all. And there are many techniques for that, and this is developing now quite interesting because you can open your own free page. You know there are many free pages providers that give you pages, 50 megabytes, 20 megabytes, but then compel you to have these idiotic things. And then you can build your page with JavaScript and some small HTML tricks so that this publicity does not appear. So you have the butter and you eat it as well, uh, which is quite uh, interesting, uh, in my opinion. Sorry. No, there is no protection that is unbreakable. The cryptography. The problem is that uh, somehow this target has to run. So at a given moment, you will have somewhere in the memory the code, the correct one, and then you just intercept it. I mean, they, 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 they can do whatever they want, but if it runs, and it has to run because it's a program, then they get it. There's no way. So if you have a look at the 
at the protection uh, situation and developments at the moment, you will see that uh, cryptography is not so much used. There are some very interesting uh, protection that use cryptography and uh, at the same time use the CRC trick. But uh, I would say that the best protection at the moment are protections that are using some hidden future f features of Windows that are not known. So the programmer experiment himself with some funny API. He finds out that when he does that, he gets <coughs> this value. Nobody knows that because nobody knows how Windows works actually. So he used that, this knowledge. He has, but very few programs do that. Very few programmers do that. So that's, uh, and anyway, you can find it out if you study enough. The, the problem is that some protection are boring. So it's, it's so boring, you don't want to protect it anymore. Sometimes, but uh, that, that's, I will say the main problem is that. Uh, protection is boring. It says you had uh, a couple of nice ideas how to search the web not using these, uh, these uh, search machines that you usually take, but with different strategies. Searching can be divided in, in three phases, as you probably know. Searching, which is very basic. So you go to a search machine and then you search. Apart from the fact that the search machine takes note of the fact that you search that and that, and has huge database for that, but it is not very effective. The second phase is combing. That is, you search people that have already searched. So, you are interested in Greta Garbo, you search the three or four mad guys in the world that have for two years searched everything about Greta Garbo. And they have somewhere a page with all possible links updated to Greta Garbo stuff. So that's shown one, one, one step more than just searching Greta Garbo. You search the people. The third step is somehow more complicated, it's luring. You make a fake page on Greta Garbo. You made it. On Greta Garbo, fake, completely fake. You just put some photos there. And then you look where the people come from that look at your page. And some of them you will fish come from interesting places that speak about Greta Garbo. That's the third step. Now, it takes more time, but it's the most effective one. Now, you must understand that Alta Vista covers at the moment, I think, one fifth of the web. Alta Vista and, and, and Northern Light are the two search engines, the most powerful one. So four fifths are not covered. So you must find them yourself. Now you can use your own Perl script to do it. You can even just use search strings on an automated script. That's pretty easy. There are, there are many ways that are explained uh, elsewhere. And, 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 and you will see that uh, it is not easy to find everything but you can have a good a good go at that. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't hear anything. If you put up a page of the way, you get more information from where Well, you, you look at your at your server logins. In your server logins, it's any, everything about where people is coming from. Sorry. Sorry, I don't understand. You can look where they come from because the last page, the last page they visit is inside. Uh, I mean, obviously, some of them will not come directly to you. But I'm, I'm speaking on, on, on great numbers. Let's say you have uh, 10,000 visitors, yeah, in, in 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 one week, and let's say that 8,000 are people that have nothing to do with with Greta Garbo, and let's say that 2,000 are interested in Greta Garbo. And let's say that 200 of these 2,000 comes from a page you didn't know of. That's all. Maybe there's nothing on that page, nothing interesting. I don't know. I mean, it's just phishing, you know? Yep, yep. So, web browsers protect the information from where they do not where before. Well, you can avoid it. You can, you can, there are many tricks to avoid giving smearing information. You can, you can use, you can be pseudo anonymous at times. But uh, you will be surprised how few people do that. How few, really. I have a site where I have 80,000 hits per day on, on the main site. And I can tell you, I, I always 
I find personally incredible that so few people care about hiding themselves little. Some of the information on my side is quite uh, of not completely legal nature. Uh, 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 and you have uh, sheriffs of America coming around, people that don't give a shit about hiding themselves, probably. Well, you say um, in this uh, disassemblers, Ida and WDESM, you can uh, read out the code, but how do you assemble it back? What? How do the code you change? You don't assemble it back. The very long ago. So here you, you have a look at the code on the disassembly. Now you take your X editor, you hear me? You take an X editor, and the code is completely different there. You have only this red part. You see this red part all in a line. So now you know that this 74 comes after this sequence. There will be thousands of 74 inside the code. But this 7422 comes after this sequence. So you now search inside your hex editor for this sequence followed by that. If you're lucky, you find only one occurrence. If you're unlucky, you find two or three. And then you look at what's following. I mean, you find it. Moment you find it somewhere in, in, in this hex editor, you just change 74 to EB, and then you save the file. It's the same file as before. You don't, you don't even change the length of the file. That is slightly more complicated, but not so much. You can add things. Normally, you don't add anything. You just choose a part of the code that is not used. You make a jump to the part of the code that is not used. There, you write your routine, and then you jump back here, and you go. So you can add as much as you want with two jumps. Yeah? Uh, that's what you would do. But in this case, it is not necessary, because you change one byte with one byte. So no problem. Note this byte, 74, 22. 74 is jump equal, and 22 is 22 bytes. It's jumping to 624. One, two, three, four. If you count 20, 22 bytes, you go to 624. You must understand the beauty of assembly as well. Huh? Yeah. yeah, I would advise you to use Google because Google has something very, very interesting. They have cached page. That is, even if a page disappears on the web, you have good chances you can find it on Google. There is another very interesting uh, uh, tool that I would suggest you to use, that is inference. Inference is a tool that uses four or five search engines at the same time. There are many like that, yeah? But inference will give you a, a result page already formatted that sometimes is quite good, it's quite interesting, quite, uh, quite useful. Info, Google. Write it down. Yeah. Nobody can. If you didn't use Google until now, do it. So that's my personal best top 10 list. Yeah? Alta Vista. Use Alta Vista. If you learn how to search advanced in Alta Vista, you will find a lot of things. Alta Vista is very good to find specific things. So you put a line with 100 characters that exist only in one page, and you need to find that page. You can put in Alta Vista, I for My mama got the... Very, very long. If you have it exactly as it is, with commas, stays correctly, then it will give you only one page, that page that you want. So if you have somewhere on a paper, an old page that you don't, well, where, where was that? How can I find it? And you just put it in Alta Vista and find it immediately. <coughs> so Alta Vista, then Google. Google had cached pages, Google Com, yeah? had cached pages. So you can find here things that have disappeared on the web. There's two more things about Google. Uh, Google is counting the links to a page. So that's the feature. So if you say, for example, 80 technologies, they're in Canada, not the page, they're making DJA cards, graphics, and they have a completely screwed up domain name. Nobody can remember it. But in Google, if you say ATI, you will automatically get there because they have billions of links to this page. So Google will always give you one or two or three words, the most linked to page. And 
they have a feature that has a small red bar. If you click on that bar, you see all the pages that link to this one page. So you can go backwards and this, free. This you can make with other visa as well. Where you can write leads, other code, and then actually, not the history, yeah? Yeah, and then you get it. You can do the main thing with images, yeah? Image, two point, and then for instance, uh, red cut. And then you will get all the images on the web that have a red cat in the name. Now, many of them would be about red cats. The algorithms are completely different, but you must be aware of the fact that the algorithms of all search engines are state secrets, in theory, and are completely different. They don't want you even to understand them, because if you do, you can push your page up. That's the reason most of them, Google as well, are using rotating algorithms. So sometimes, it is true, in Google, the link's relevance is very high, but not always. So that these kind of, you, I mean, all these things are very specific for, for anyway, I will add another one, if you allow me, that is inference. And when we are still on searching, I will also underline the importance of Usenet. As you probably know, Deja Vu is a search engine dedicated to Usenet. Uh, for those of you that uh, never used it, uh, well, uh, have a look and have a try, because you will discover a lot of things. Uh, if you do a search uh, on Usenet uh, on uh, anything you are interested in, chance are that you find people you don't even know that exist speaking about that right now somewhere on their email. And then if you follow those people and you have a look at where did they post and what they post, through, uh, sooner or later you will find their pages, you will find their links, so you will have knowledge. So Usenet, it's in, in a search strategy, Usenet and Deja Vu are very, very important as well. Uh, I would add uh, also Northern Light, because in the very recent time, Northern Light has developed, at the moment, Northern Light has a database that is bigger than Alta Vista since yeah, one month. Northern Light, it's Canadian. And FAST, FAST is a search engine, European search engine, made by the same people that made the FTP search in Trondheim, in Nor Norway. FAST is very good as well. So that's for the search engines. But I mean, uh, you will quickly reduce to two or three that you will know how to use very well, because uh, it takes some time for each one at the particular thing. But uh, as soon as you... Uh, you must build your search strategy without losing time in order to get at the things you want very quickly without losing time, which is very difficult because there are so many things on the web that you are continuously uh, pulled this way and the other and you, and you lose your, your path often. That's another thing I will maybe close after that. Uh, that is the ACMAIL search and FTP retrieval. So as you probably know, some of you at least I hope, you can get anything for free, download everything for free without being connected from, from internet. You just use some FTP miler. So you send an email to FTP miler, the one you choose, the one you, you, you like best, there are 20 of them, and you, say, you tell them, I want to have this 20 megabyte huge file somewhere in Japan. If you access that directly with your FTP connection, you will lose it, you will break it, you will, it will take you two hours to download it. FTPMI will do it for you for free and send it to you already made. So it's, I, I never understand why people don't use that. So use FTP mail, use the mail fetcher, these kind of things. To browse the web, it's fun if you know what you do. But to download online, it's criminal if you have to pay. It's no point in doing it. Do it for free. So those of you that don't know that, 
do follow do the following <laughs> Send an email with help both in the subject line and in the text to FTP mail at ftp.sunat.se Yes, SE. That's the FTP mail that I know of. There are many others, yeah? And uh, if you want a, a mail fetcher to get pages and small programs, you can use the Trieste one, which is very good. It's all free, yeah? You can have uh, so many megabytes, as many as you want, for free. HTTP. send a help both in the text and the subject and you get instructions how, how they work. It's very easy. I mean, you just tell them what you want from the web, where is it and where they, you want it to be sent. One of the advantages of using FTP mail is that they are accessing the resource you want, not you. So on the logins there, they will have FTP mail for Trieste. Of course, in Trieste, they will have your logins, but they don't care, and I know that they destroy them every week. So that means it's not completely anonymous, but it's quite an interesting thing. Another trick you may be interested in, if you want to look at a page without your system administrator knowing what you're doing, you let Babylon translators from Alta Vista translate it. So you do it that way. You know that there is an automatic translator in Alta Vista, yeah? You Tell the translator you want a page you want translated from Portuguese into English, for instance. So there is nothing Portuguese, so the page will be and remain in English. And who will be on the login set? The Alta Vista, not you. Alta Vista translator has huge, huge logging that are destroyed every week as well. So in this way, your system administrator will see, aha, he's using Alta Vista, nice guy. It will be who you, you can you can decide hey, has, how you want it. Normally, it will be UU encoded, but you can have it zipped as well. The modern ones, the Trieste one, can send you a zipped file, zipped as attachment, so you get it zipped. But normally, most FTP mail server will send it to you UU encoded, and you, you have to reconstruct it. Besides, there is a limit in the sending, so they will send you packets of 300,000 bytes each. Then if you have a 50 megabyte file that you want, or if you are downloading, I don't know, millions of porn images from, from Japan, then you will have to reconstruct everything because of the maximum legal. But it, it, there are automatic scripts and programs that will reconstruct it. So you don't do anything at all, actually. You just send your request at the morning, and after two hours, you get everything for free. Uh, but if you want to have a zip file, for example, which is compressed already, it is impossible to give you a correct answer because it depends on many things. What is your uh, email program? Which system are you using? And which systems are you crossing? Uh, but anyway, don't worry. You just try it. And there are, if you send help, they will give you all the options, possible options. And you will see that you, have, you, you can graduate until it works correctly. N normally, I get small files as attachment I in a zipped format and big file in UU encoded format and then I have to decode them. But that's uh, up to you and up to your program. It depends, it depends also how much load they have. 
sometime the Trieste server answers in 10 minutes, sometime in two, three hours. Uh, there, is, there is a classific every day updated of, of which one are the quickest one at the moment. If you're interested, I can give it to you. But uh, I would suggest that you just begin with one of them with a very simple uh, query where you know that the file exists uh, and what you want exactly, and then you, you, you calibrate it, yeah? I, I would suggest. <coughs> Well, uh, German law doesn't matter nothing at all because what's important is the European law. And European law is quite, how would you say, nebulous. Uh, as you may know, uh, there are different interests between Americans, European, and Japanese. So the three uh, have completely different legal, uh, they are tackling this thing in a completely different uh, way. The Americans are very, very, uh, severe and uh, don't agree at all that you should reverse engineer anything at all. The European, grosso modo, allow you to reverse engineer everything as long as you have bought it, it is really yours, as long as you don't sell it, you don't sell the code, or you don't use the code for your application. So if you're doing that for studies or for your interest or in order to not have any problems on your computer you can say haha this lousy program makes problem on my computer i have to reverse engineer it because i want it to run correctly well it's it's okay as long as you bought it legitimately and as long as you don't sell the code of course well let's look at this way sorry Sorry? No. Normally you have you have a, a, a thing where you have I accept, I don't accept. And then if you click on accept, theoretically, you have accepted some conditions. And in these conditions, most of the programs being American, there is you shall not reverse engineer that. It is very easy to change I accept to I don't accept and then click it. <laughs> You don't, you don't even need to look at the code before. There is a pro... No, no that's, that's true. That's what you, you should do because, I mean, there is no point in going illegal with that. <laughs> there is a program named Customizer. Customizer. I have it here on the computer. Who wants, I can, can give it to you. Uh, which is very nice because um, it uh, ungrades grayed uh, menu options and allows you to change any text. So you point the customizer, the moment you have this I accept, you point it on I accept, you see the string I accept, you change it, I don't accept it at all, and then you click. <laughs> I cannot see, I cannot see the problem. <laughs> so you didn't accept it and that's all. Yeah, but there are some programs where if you open the seal, you break the seal on the CD cover, the obvious way is not to break the seal, but to open the seal on well, the other way. I would, I would say there is no point in having physically a program. I, I cannot see why you cannot take the same program from the net. <laughs> if you want to. Ah, if you buy it. But if you buy it, you no problem. You open it and... But uh, in that case, uh, it's uh, usually just void. What? Because uh, you have uh, to uh, read this CD because uh, the I don't get the point. If you have a sealed program, then you bought it. So what, what's the problem? Either you have a sealed program or you don't have it. If you have a sealed program and you open it, well, you bought it, so you can open it. And, uh, no, but there are some where it's written, if you break the seal, you yeah. accept the licensing condition. Yes, but why cannot I have the same, pro same program from the web instead of buying it? Yeah, okay. so Take it from the worst yes, I don't see why you should buy anything at all, actually. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, it, I mean, there is no point. Unless, unless you are very happy with the program. I've done it. I, 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 I always, if I really use a program, I always, why not? I mean, uh, most of the time it's not very expensive. For instance, the disassembler here, the DASM that I, that I used, I, I, I bought it. I, I, I sent the money to, 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 to them and I bought it. 
after three or four years because I was really convinced that was a good program. And I, I, I really, I'm not, I'm not joking. I, 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 I tell you, any one of you, that software the protection is just a game for kids. So it's, it's fun to use something, but you will, if you really like a program normally, you will want to have it, you want to update it, you will want to have documentation, you will want to be, sometimes some of these programs, if you do something with them, they put the fact that they are not registered inside. So that's not nice either. Uh, I mean, of course you can deprotect de everything, but uh, I think that we, one of the things I would say is that you don't need to update very often. I'm very happy with a very old X workshop uh, version. And I see that every two months there is a new X workshop. Now, version that probably has to do with the fact that its protection is cracked but uh, I don't see the point in updating everything uh, continuously most of the time you just lose uh, information you do things uh, so I don't know if you agree with me but uh, so that's uh, that's where I think if you yeah uh, what about hardware yes. don't know anything about it <laughs> I'm not a hacker. I don't even know how to begin. You told us about uh, several files that uh, Microsoft could use to get information about you. Is it known what files these are? The Windows, Windows 98 uh, had, because they, they, they took that off now, but until April, had an automatic, um, an automatic connection every time you went on the web. And uh, during this connection, uh, the data that uh, Windows 98 had gathered on your hard disk were transmitted to Microsoft. There was a great fuss, like the Germans say about that, uh, three months ago. And uh, Microsoft uh, has promised that they have changed it. Who knows if they did. But uh, the problem is that sometimes it is difficult to intercept this data, even if you are working with sniffers and everything, because they are sent uh, in a very clever way, actually. I haven't got the code here now, but uh, you can find it uh, explained. Uh, there is a, a very interesting American site that you probably know of, named Jig Girl, the Jig Girl site, where you will find all these kind of things explained very well. What's the address? Uh, I just don't You know, addresses are such a sack, they change so often. It's http www.geek.geek uh, streak uh, tire yes. girl point com www.geek.com So that's uh, I hope some of you will yes Well, uh, you must understand that I am seeing all these dangle things from the uh, pure software approach, so I refuse to use hardware to, to intercept that. There are, of course, uh, hardware ways to do it. Uh, what uh, you can do with uh, any dangle is to have a look, very simple, have a look at what happens if you have the dangle and have a look at what happens if you don't have the dangle. It is slightly more complicated if you don't have the dangle at all. In that case, you have to reconstruct what the dangle would do. So you use software for that. As instead of sending the data to the out port, you send them to your, uh, to your wrapper and, and, and you see what happens. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, boring. Uh, 
but uh, most of the time I, I've been told that works. And there, there, is, there are many dongle e emulators. Uh, I have them on my page as well, and you can download them and, and, and use them. The problem is that they change the dongle continuously yeah? because of that, because of people cracking them. So you have a dongle new version for Aladdin, for us, for everything, every two weeks. So, but the principle is always the same. So Normally, the point is very easy. You get your target, you look at it, you look what it does, and then you understand why it does it, and then you change it. That's it. And it is not complicated. The, the, the whole assembly thing is, 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 is great fun once you got into it, because uh, it really gives you the possibility to to get the gut of something with, with one byte, two bytes, which is great fun. I mean, the, 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 these programmers, they make very complicated protections, and then they check if the protection with, with, with two or three things. That's really what amazed me as well. So, are you happy with that? Uh, yeah?